Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of The Breakdown. Here, we will try to analyze events surrounding F1 in a manner that is objective as possible to offer more insight into how it could affect the sport. Without further delay, here is The Breakdown. Ferrari have almost become the laughing stock in F1 thanks to a pretty consistent recent history of botching strategy calls. This trait has proved particularly costly this year as they have already lost a sizable chunk of points to bad strategy decisions. I'm your host Dylan Shelley and first up on the breakdown, why Ferrari suck at strategy. It's often easy to criticise split second decisions made by F1 teams. It has to be acknowledged that F1 teams and especially their strategists are under immense pressure to make the right calls with time often being an extremely limiting factor. As such, all teams make poor strategic calls once in a while. Ferrari just seem to take things to another level and do it with alarming regularity. In 2022 alone, Ferrari have gotten their strategy blatantly wrong at the Monaco Grand Prix, British Grand Prix and the Hungarian Grand Prix. They've also made a few other smaller blunders as well. Three races out of the 13 so far ruined by bad strategy is a sizable chunk, especially when the unreliability of the Ferrari engine is also taken into account. This is poor, even by the most lenient standards that could be applied to an F1 team, let alone its oldest and one of the most successful. Trying to get to the root of why Ferrari keep making these blunders isn't easy. As is usually the case in F1, there are multiple reasons why this keeps happening, and here are a few possibilities. Laid-back approach to the season Mattia Bonotto had in the past stated the following about their objective for the 2022 season while speaking to the BBC. We set our objectives to be back competitive in 2022. So our objective is to be competitive, not to win the championship, and it would be completely wrong to turn that into, let's try to win the championship because we are so competitive. Any one of the remaining teams, possibly with the exception of Red Bull, would give anything to be as fast as Ferrari are, and consequently would give their all to go for the championship. Bonotto making such statements publicly well into the season could lead to complacency as all they have to do to reach this benchmark is be competitive, which they are. Misplaced personnel Despite Ferrari being the oldest team still racing in F1, their crew is relatively young and quite inexperienced when compared to their counterparts at Red Bull and Mercedes. Bonotto himself is an engineer who has been thrust into the role of the team principal. Then there is Ignacio Iñaki Rueda, their sporting director and the man in charge of strategy. He too is an engineer whose only previous experience of the role of a strategist was at the now defunct Lotus team. Barring the two fruitless seasons when Sebastian Vettel challenged for the championship, he has never been in the heat of a championship battle. He has never been in a battle as close as the current one with Red Bull period. Going through the list of other key personnel at Ferrari shows that this is actually quite a common trend where engineers are thrust into such positions. They lack specialists that the other teams have. It's also worth noting that through the many senior changes that Ferrari have made since the beginning of the turbo hybrid era, an era for which they aren't well regarded for making wise strategy calls, one man has remained and somehow avoided getting the sack. You guessed it, their head of strategy in Yaki Rueda. Stubbornness This is one trait that has often been associated with Ferrari from their inception, and while it has paid dividends sometimes, it is not without its detriments. For many, it is as clear as day that Ferrari have to make a few changes to salvage 2022. However, Bonotto has the following to say about it to Motorsport. I don't think that there is anything different that we need to do. I think it is simply to continue on our journey of continuously improving ourselves step by step, focusing on each single race. It's entirely possible that Bonotto is digging in his heels as a consequence of Ferrari having been so flippant about overhauling their team structure and personnel throughout the past decade. Perhaps the pendulum has swung too far the other way. Plan-oriented instead of result-oriented While most teams tend to stick to two or three strategic options, it has become almost comical how many strategies Ferrari seem to turn up with for each race. It's become quite common for them to resort to Plan D or Plan E, while everyone else is choosing between Plan A and Plan B. We don't know for sure if they do indeed go into races with five or six plans or just use a different nomenclature, and to be fair, the assertion of the former is entirely speculative. But, it is entirely possible that they keep far too many unnecessary strategy options up their sleeves. 
Either way, there tends to be plenty of confusion during key crunch moments. There is also a tendency to stick to their pre-race plans even if the conditions during the race aren't conducive to these plans at all. Oftentimes, when they've had to make a call on the fly, they seem to abandon all reason and stubbornly stick to what was already decided before the race, just as they did in Hungary when the hard tyres simply didn't work as anticipated. Put all these factors together and combine them with an attitude of stubbornly being unable to accept their shortcomings, and you get an almost perfect recipe for taking a brilliantly fast car and a top-tier driver pairing and turning it into a painful, nigh-weekly exhibition. At least, if you're a Ferrari fan. Will Ferrari be able to honestly address their strategic shortcomings? Head over to my community page to vote in the poll and let me know what you think in the comments. And if you liked this video, feel free to subscribe and check out my others for all the latest in the world of Formula 1.